Good afternoon and welcome to the finals of the Good Quiz 2023 brought to you by the Murugappa Group. We had a great turnout of 2,600 participants yesterday for the preliminary round, of which 200 are taking part today in the final. What are the prizes? The winner gets 5,000 rupees, the first runner up gets 3,000 rupees, the second runner up gets 2,000 rupees of Amazon gift vouchers. Those placed fourth to tenth will also get prizes of 1,000 rupees each. Audience, all of those who are watching on YouTube today, we have a couple of audience questions as well. And the top five fastest answers will get 500 rupees each of gift vouchers. Okay. So what is good about the good quiz? The whole idea came about with the theme of being good and doing good, which is one of the ideas of Murugappa Group's theme for their, for their, for their company. And it, for me personally, as a quiz master, it's interesting because we are now constrained to a certain theme, rather like a musician has to sing only certain notes in a raga. But you can get great questions out of this. And I'm sure over the next 30 questions, you're going to enjoy all that is good and great in this world and probably even out of this world also. So we use the same topics that you commonly see in international cuisine, which is history, geography, science, uh, literature, sports, arts and entertainment, culture, lifestyle, and a couple of miscellaneous topics. And But in each of these, what's good or what's great is the theme. So having said that, we'll move on to our next slide. Let's see what that is. Yes, so do send in your answers, audience, to the email ID that you see there, the good quiz at corpcorp.murugappa.com. So I'm going to leave this slide on for about another 10 seconds for all of you to note it down. This is for the audience watching us on YouTube. Okay, and just to get things rolling and breaking the ice, where are the finalists playing from? Do type in which city you're playing from and let's take a look at where all of you are coming from gathered here today on this call uh, to play the Good Quiz Finals of 2023. Which city are you playing from? Okay, let's see what the word cloud reveals. Okay. A lot of you from all over India. And of course, Chennai leading the way with Delhi and Mumbai, Hyderabad and Bangalore. Uh, Ahmedabad and a lot of other places across the length and breadth of this country. Right, we have one more question as a poll. How old are the finalists? So I'm not going to ask your exact age. If you're 18 or below, click the right box, 19 to 30, 31 to 50, and 50 and above. Okay, so most of you are 19 to 30 age group. Well done, that's a fairly good spread. Couple of people over 50, good for you. Hope the memory cells work well. And with those words, let's start off the first question of the good quiz. You have to type in the answer. What national day is celebrated on August 7, since 2015? Celebrating the Swadeshi movement of 1905. There's a nice clue there in the visual for you to figure out. Don't forget that you need to type in as soon as you get your answer, you get more points that way. 
what do you think Gandhi is doing there? And I will give you a clue. I'm just looking for one word of eight letters. Right, some people have written lighthouse for some reason. Yes, but 35 of you have mentioned handloom, which is the right answer. In 2015, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, declared August 7th as a National Handloom Day uh, because August 7th, 1905 was the date the Swadeshi movement started at a town hall in Calcutta. And uh, Gandhi described the Swadeshi movement as the soul of Swaraj. Good start for you. Let's take a look at what's happening with that. So here are early leads, Shayan Maiti on the top right now. Let's move on to the next question. Yeah. So this is National Handloom Day that we spoke to you about. Here is the next question. Three old British biplanes defended Malta from the Italian Air Force in 1940. Which of these was not one of their nicknames? You can see a symbol comprising three elements, a heart, a cross, and an anchor, and that might give you a clue as to the three nicknames. One of these was not a nickname, so which of these was not a nickname? Thirty seconds left for inspiration to strike. All right, 97 of you said sacrifice was not the right answer, and you're absolutely right. It was faith, hope, and charity. A little bit of story about that. You see, during World War II, uh, Malta was very, very important for the British because it was halfway between the Mediterranean to the Suez uh, Canal in the east, and also it could block Italy's positions in North Africa as well. And when the war started, Malta found itself being attacked by the Italian Air Force. And they found these just these three little old biplanes, which were commandeered to fly. And they held off the much more superior Italian Air Force for about 10 days before reinforcements arrived. And not only did they protect Malta, they gave the people of Malta a lot of courage to face up to the Axis powers. And for that bravery, uh, Malta was awarded the George Cross uh, by the British, and it's known as the George Cross Island itself. The three theological virtues in Christianity are faith, hope, and charity, and that's the nickname given to these three little biplanes. Right, moving on to the next question. Which first leader of the opposition in the Lok Sabha helped form cooperatives to run the Indian coffee house chain. You see a picture of him there. Thirty seconds left. People still making up their minds. Okay, 152 answers. 101 of you said A.K. Gopalan. Good for you. That is the right answer. And a small change in the lead there. 
So the Indian Coffee House was started before the independence and it was actually run by the coffee boards. And in the 1950s, the coffee boards found they couldn't support it and they wanted to shut it down. And Jawaharlal Nehru, with the help of Sri A.K. Gopalan, pushed the unions to form and run their own coffee houses. And that's how A.K. Gopalan became the savior of the Indian coffee houses. And it said uh, the Indian coffee houses have become a great uh, place for addas and other things. Uh, the waiters at the Indian coffee house in Kolkata were apparently famous for their views on everything from the Vietnam War to Jean-Luc Godard films. The ones at the Delhi University outlet were often indulgent of students who could only afford one cup of coffee but needed a place to sit and chat. The ones at Kerala apparently combined both these qualities, but whatever it was, the coffee houses became the nation's locus for both coffee and conversations. Thank you, A.K. Gopalan. Next question coming up. Audience, this is for you, not for the participants. What Latin word for wise applies to all of us without distinction, thanks to Carl Linnaeus? I'm looking for a one word answer. One word, do send in your answers to the good quiz at corp.murugappa.com. Email the subject as audience question number one. So I leave that on the screen for another 10 seconds. Do read that and then we'll move on to our participants. Okay. The International Earth Rotation and Reference System Service at Paris decides on the insertion of which unit? Your four choices there. Is it leap second, leap milligram, leap degree, or leap millimeter? Twenty seconds up, and ten seconds left. Okay, good. So, one hundred and six of you said leap second, which is the right answer. Brilliant. So around the world, actually, civil timekeeping is based on something called UTC or Coordinated Universal Time. And the difference is that the Coordinated Universal Time is very, very exact, whereas the Earth's rotation, which also defines time, is a little slower. So every now and then, the two needs to be matched. So now and then you have one extra second added to our times, usually on the end of the year to coordinate to, and that is the leap second, okay? Next question coming up. The map that you see on the next slide will show five great journeys of which person considered the medieval world's second most traveled person? <clears throat> 50 of you racing off on the mark. Very quick answering here. So who was the medieval world's second most traveled person? You can see there those five big journeys that this person made, not only within India, but outside India to the Middle East as well. Right, the time is up and 
we have a fair bit of people who said Ibn Battuta. We'll talk about that a little later. It's actually Guru Nanak. Ayush is leading. So Ibn Battuta was the most traveled person and he wrote his account in a book called Al Rila. The second most traveled person in the medieval world was none other than Guru Nanak. And between 1500 and 1524, spanning 24 years, Guru Nanak traveled more than 28,000 kilometers. And he made these five great journeys, which Sikhs call Udasis. Most of his lifetime was traveling on foot. And all, all along his travels, his good friend, Bhai Mardana, who was a Muslim who used to play the Rabab, accompanied him. So Guru Nanak would sing his Shabads and Mardana would accompany him on his Rabab. And that's how they made these five great trips. So all about Guru Nanak this time, moving on from Guru Nanak to something on geography. Sisters must help each other is a mnemonic, memory aid or a mnemonic to remember what list. Sisters must help each other is a memory aid to remember what list. Look at the letters S, M, H, E and O. Okay, time is up. Most of you have said the Great Lakes of America. And you are absolutely right. Scores still holding where they are. Let's take a look at the answer. So the Great Lakes are, are Superior, Michigan, Huron, Irie, and Ontario. And that's how the mnemonic comes. Sisters must help each other. And the Great Lakes are the largest group of freshwater lakes on earth by total area. And they're the second largest by total volume containing 21% of the world's surface freshwater by volume. So those are the Great Lakes of America. Moving on to the next question. This one is on chemistry. Which element was discovered in Copenhagen in 1923 by analyzing the X-ray spectra of Norwegian and Greenland zircons? You have yttrium, hafnium, ytterbium, and terbium. Ten seconds left for you to make up your mind. Okay, let's see how many of you got that right. 110 of you said hafnium, and that is the right answer. And the scores remain where they, the positions remain where they are. Scores are moved up for everyone, I guess. So the Latin name for Copenhagen is Hafnia. And since this was discovered at Copenhagen, it was given the name Hafnium. The other choices that I put are equally interesting. Yterby in the Stockholm archipelago of Sweden is perhaps the most famous for being the single richest source of elemental discoveries in the world. In fact, the chemical elements yttrium, terbium, erbium, and Yterbium are all named after this little town of Yterby. And actually four more elements were first discovered in this particular town as well. So that's a little bit about Yterby as well and all its names. Hafnium is a good conductor of neutrons used to make control rods, such as those found in nuclear submarines. Moving on to the next question. Type in your answer this time. I'm looking for an acronym. Just one short acronym referring to comets and asteroids that by gravity have been nudged to enter our planet's neighborhood. There's a hint there, a character from this film.
what acronym refers to comets and asteroids that by gravity have been nudged to enter our planet's neighborhood. This is important to all of us because they may come and hit the earth and cause catastrophes. So it's good to know about these. Okay, someone wrote Neowise and Morpheus. Good guessing on the Morpheus, but the answer happens to be Neo or Neos if it's a plural. Small little change there in the scoreboard. And let's take a look at the answer. So Neo actually stands for near Earth objects, such as the one that you see there in the picture on your screen. So these are these comets which have been nudged into Earth's neighborhood. In fact, if a NEO orbit crosses the Earth's orbit and the object is larger than 140 meters across, it's considered a PHO or a potentially hazardous object. So a lot of effort and money and time is being spent into detecting these before they come and hit us. Right, moving on from NEO to another type in your answer, I'm looking for the blank, or you can give me the entire word there, 2020 Geminian word to describe a combined COVID and seasonal flu outbreak. So I've used the term Geminian word, so hopefully that will give you a clue as to what that short blank is. You can either write the blank or you can complete the whole word by adding the letters D, E, M, I, C. Either is fine. Okay, some people have written triple demic. I said there are only two, so it has to be a twin demic. Okay, and that term twin demic was actually coined by the New York Times and refers to a time when there was a severe flu epidemic coinciding with a COVID infection. A triple demic is when you have the flu virus and the COVID virus and the respiratory syncytial virus 3, which is also a kind of a flu. Okay, so that's called a triple demic with some of you have written as an answer. Not many answered that question. So moving on to the next one. What is the English meaning of the prefix to the title Shakuntalam of the play by Kalidas? So the word Shakuntala is not the title. It is part of a longer title. There are some words before that. There are some letters rather before that. And what do those letters mean? If you try and recall, what is the full title of Shakuntala, the play by Kalidas? And what is the English meaning of that prefix? Is it recognition? Is it forgetfulness? Is it separation? Or is it misfortune? All these uh, Emotions and situations do occur in the play Shakuntala, as you well know. Think about it. Okay, time is up. 86 of you decided to go with recognition, which is the right answer. Well done. So this is, the word is Abhijnana Shakuntalam. So Abhijnana means recognition. What I found interesting while reading about this was Kalidasa took his source from the Mahabharata, where the original story of Shakuntala is located. However, there is a Jataka tales version of the same, known as the Katahari Jataka. And here, to prove that she was telling the truth, the mother, the Shakuntala character, grabs the child, who is a bodhisattva, by the leg and hurls him up into the air, telling the king, if you're indeed the father of my child, I pray that he stays in midair, but if not, may he fall and die. 
the Bodhisattva actually floats cross-legged in the air and begs the king to accept him, which he did. The story ends there very happily. The mother becomes the queen and the Bodhisattva took the throne when his father passed away. So that is the Jataka version called the Katari Jataka. It's actually the story of Shakuntala. Okay. On that little bit of extra information for all of you, let's move on to the next question of the good quiz. And this happens to be the answer. If you remember the first question on what is the word given by, to all of us without distinction by Carl Linnaeus, it is the sapiens of Homo sapiens. Linnaeus was the one who actually came up with the uh, nomenclature or the binomial nomenclature of all living things. So uh, he was the one who gave the name Homo sapiens. And the oldest known remains are thought to be found in Morocco. So I'm looking for the word sapiens or Homo sapiens. And that is done. Here is the next audience question for all of you. The Goethe Institute promotes German study and cultural relations worldwide. After whom is it named in India? And you can see a stamp uh, released by India of this German-born Orientalist. Three letters and seven letters is his name, first and last name. So send your answers to the good quiz at corp.murugappa.com and please label your answer as the subject as audience question number two. Who was this German? Back to the quiz. The tribal world of Beria Elvin is the only work in which literary genre to win the Sahitya Academy Award? 13 letters is your answer. The tribal world of Varia Elvin is the only work in which literary genre to win the Sahitya Academy Award? The answer is a single 13 letter word. This is a slightly tougher one. 10 seconds left and only around 80 have tried. No negative marks, so feel free to guess. Okay, let's see what you've written. Psychedelic, encyclopedia, anthropology. 57 of you have said autobiography, which is the right answer. Well done. So, Varia Elvin uh, uh, is a very, very interesting person. Uh, and uh, he wrote this, he was asked to put out this book. And unfortunately, he passed away before the book was printed. So, it was printed posthumously. It is the only autobiography to, to make it to the Sahitya Academy's list that way. So, Ramachandra Guha actually mentions that uh, reading uh, two of uh, Varia Elvin's book. The tribal world of area well you saw and leaves from the jungle life in a gond village inspired him to do a phd in sociology so that's very elven for you and moving on to the next question of the good quiz here you have to type in your answer name this prestigious prize started in 1969 i'm looking for a one seven letter word there is a clue there an appropriately named British wholesale food company founded it, although the prize has nothing to do with food. So what is the name of this prize? Just give me one important seven letter word.
Okay, and let's see. Nobel Peace Prize, Michelin, Dadasar Falke Award, no. 43 of you have said the Booker Prize or the Man Booker is also acceptable. So it was the Booker. So the Booker company uh, or the Booker McConnell company actually dealt with foods and now they're owned by Tesco's. And they started this prize in 1968 to provide an alternative to uh, the to the French prize, which is called the Prix Gonco. Initially, it was awarded only for Commonwealth uh, writers, but the next year they opened it out to everyone. So this is the 2022 winner, Shehan Karuna Tilaka. And interestingly, Geetanjali Sri, uh, with her translator Daisy Rockwell, won the International Man Booker Prize for her Hindi uh, novel, Wraith Samadhi, or The Tomb of Sand. And uh, one word about Salman Rushdie, he won the 1981, of course, as you all know, for Midnight's Children. And then he won the Booker of Bookers in 1993. And the best of the Booker in 2008, all these prizes were given in celebration of the Booker Prize's 25th and 40th anniversary. That book seems to have certainly held uh, to, to time. And all the it's still holding good there, I guess, Midnight's Children. Okay, that is the Booker Prize. Moving on. All right. In the first Olympic marathon, we move to sports now. 1896, who or what on a bicycle led the 17 runners who took part? Is it a movie camera? Is it Pierre de Coubertin? Is it Michael Braille? Or is it a stopwatch? So you have an interesting set of options there, all of which would seem plausible. Who do you think or what do you think on a bicycle led the 17 runners who took part in the very first Olympic marathon of the modern Olympic Games held in Athens in 1896? All right, so 35 of you have said stopwatch, but 50 of you got the wrong answer. Pierre de Coubet and I would have thought so myself. I'm sorry for the wrong answers. <clears throat> Interestingly, uh, it is a stopwatch. I'll tell you about that a little while. But Michael Grail was the guy who had the original idea to have a marathon race. And he designed this cup himself and he presented it to the first winner, Spirit and Lewis. As far as the stopwatch is concerned, uh, it was always, even today, it's a difficult thing, keeping time in the Olympic Games. <clears throat> Timing was a difficult, was a marathon thing in the marathon itself. The same stopwatch which was held by the judge at the start of the race had to be carried on the bicycle ahead of the runners all the way to the finish line to make sure that the timing was right. So it was a stopwatch after all. Okay, moving on to the next question. <clears throat> Which sportsperson has been flag bearer of India at the Olympic Games the most times? Is it Balbir Singh Senior, Leander Pace, Shiva Keshavan, or Anju Bobby George? So you have pictures of all four of them, all great sports persons. <clears throat> okay, time is up. And Shiva Keshavan, 69 of you have said that, which is the right answer. It's a bit of a googly. Let's take a look at the answers. So Shiva Keshavan happens to be a winter Olympic. He's a six-time Olympian at the Winter Olympics 
and he was the first Indian to compete in Luge at the Winter Olympic Games. So tribute to don't forget, India also has a presence in the Winter Olympics. Okay, that's Shiva K7 for you. Next question coming up. Type in your answer. What word, also a functional region of the heart, describes Chris Chatterjee's role in his friend's 1954 triumph? And you can see Chris Chatterjee there, number 42, and his friend is number 41 behind him. And Chris Chatterjee became BBC's first sports personality of the year in 1954 by helping his friend achieve sporting fame. So the more famous person is the one running behind him. Chris Chatterjee's role was to maintain speed. So that might give you a clue about what word that is, which is also a part of the human heart. Okay, time is up. Let's see what you've written. Not prologue, not Sachin Tendulkar or Indochina. Roger Bannister, some of you wrote. 55 of you said pacemaker, which is the right answer. Okay, positions holding where they are. So this is Roger Bannister's famous four-minute mile, mile under four minutes. And to make sure that he keeps to time, he had two of his friends, Chris Chatterjee, and Chris Brasher to run and make sure that he is on time to get that record. And that's how these two helped Roger Bannister achieve immortality and fame. Pacemaker is, of course, the part of your heart which maintains the speed and regularity of your heartbeat. In technical terms, it's known as the SA node or the sinoatrial node. Word about Chris Brasher, whom you see there. Chris Brasher happens to be one of the co-founders of the London Marathon. Okay, so that's a little bit of extra information for you. Moving on from Chris Chatterjee. This is Bowman and Belly of the Mudumalai Forest Preserve in the photograph. Name any of their two children. So those of you who've been watching movies or watching documentaries might find this easy. Fifteen seconds left. <clears throat> you can name any of their two children. Anyone? Okay. Let's see. A lot of uh, Virappan and all that. No, it was not Virappan. It was Ragu and Ammu. Okay, so those are the two. Who are Ragu and Amu? Well, this question is about one of the Indian documentaries to be in the shortlist for the Oscars, which are coming up. This is Kartikis Gonzalez's Elephant Whisperers. If you haven't seen this movie yet, go right now this evening and watch that film. An amazing, feel-good, heartwarming film. This is one thing that Kartiki Gonzalez said. She was actually driving through the Budumalai forest. When she spotted this man and this elephant happily ambling around, with the elephant actually putting his hand over the man, and they are like very, very good friends. And so the man actually called as it come and, and he introduced her to the elephant and that's how this entire film got made. So here's what she said. It portrayed the dignity of both the magnificent elephants and the indigenous people who have lived with them and cared for them over centuries. I also wanted the audience to stop seeing animals as the other and start seeing them as one of us. There is so much we can learn from indigenous people, respect for the land and taking only what they need. Great film. I hope it wins. Let's see. Fingers crossed.
Okay, so the answer to the second question on who was the Orientalist happens to be Friedrich Max Müller. Okay, so Max Müller, of course, um, he he did a huge uh, volume of 50 volumes of sacred books of the East. He edited it. He also uh, translated a great collection of the Sanskrit poems of the Rig Veda. And he was an important proponent of a discipline which he called the science of religion as well. And um, in fact, Muller is not his first name. It happens to be his second name. But he thought Muller was a very common name and people may not recognize him. So he introduced Max Muller as, as his name. Okay, so that's a little bit about Max Muller. So in India, the Goethe Institutes are called Max Muller Bhavans. Okay. Here is the next audience question coming for you. Who is this freedom fighter, social reformer, and activist? She was the driving force behind the renaissance of Indian handicrafts, handlooms, and theater. You see a logo. Part of the name has been blanked out there. It says Crafts Shop of the Crafts Council of India. And you see the Google Doodle there, which was released on one of her anniversaries. So who is this amazing lady? Send your answers to the good quiz at corp.murugapra.com. Email subject, audience question number three. Moving on to the quiz. If it's movies, we can't have a quiz without this particular movie. Which dances in the blanks are mentioned in this dialogue? Not blank, not blank, my brother. Do you know not? Is it tango and rumba? Is it rumba and zumba? Is it salsa and flamenco? Or is it disco and fandango? I see everyone is quick off the mark with this one. Okay, 85 of you said salsa and flamenco and the others were a little confused by the little combinations. Apologies for the question, but it has to be there. Okay, so one interesting thing, I'm sure most of you know that the background that you see there, the building is a Mariinsky Palace at Kiev, which is the official residence of the president of Ukraine. I'm a little surprised Zelensky didn't join in this dance. Okay. Right, so moving on from RRR to another type in your answer. In these Banksy designed mats, the welcome word was made from what abandoned objects by refugees on the Mediterranean beaches? So the refugees used to abandon these objects on Mediterranean beaches and this word welcome was made from them. You have the blanks also to help you there. Look at the color of the welcome. It's a very distinctive color. It's usually a fluorescent, highly visible color. Okay, so let's see what you wrote. Some of you have written life vets. I'm sorry, you have a small spelling error there. But if you wrote life jackets or you wrote life vests, that is absolutely fine. That is the answer. All right, things are still holding up on the top there. So this mat is apparently hand stitched using fabric from life vests abandoned on the beaches of the Mediterranean. 
Customers were advised that they no longer constitute a valid buoyancy aid. Although shockingly, apparently many of these life vests never worked. They are cheap fakes sold by those people smugglers and don't actually float. And to fabricate the mass, Banksy teamed up with an organization called Love Welcomes, who work with women in detainment camps in Greece. And all the proceeds are retained locally to help refugees access key services. Perfect entry for a good quiz by the Murugappa group. Meanwhile, let's see what happens further in this quiz. In 1678, the Sultan of Golconda granted some artists lands at a village to continue which art form named after the village. Is it Kuchipudi, Kudiyattam, Vilasini Natyam or Kalamkari? You can see uh, an image of the Sultan of Golconda, Abul Hasan Tana Shah. And on the other side, you see the Kingdom of Golconda, the geographical location, which might give you a clue as to which of these four options is the correct one. Okay, 81 of you said Puchipudi, which happens to be the right answer. Well done. So this is Vimpati Chinna Satyam, who uh, actually sublimated and systematized Indian Kuchipudi dance, giving it a more classical flavor. Vilasini Natyam is a good option as well for those of you who click that. Uh, I think you should know that it is the earlier Devadasi dances of the Telugu people and it has been reintroduced. It was suppressed by the British uh, as being immoral, but it has been brought back and revived by Swapna Sundari, who is a very famous Kuchipudi dancer herself. So that's about Kuchipudi and a little bit of information for you about Vilasini Natyam as well. Right, moving on to other questions on culture. This Benares silk with its iconic hunting motif featuring animals and birds is called what? Is it Vanasingaram? Is it Shikarga? Is it Madhuvan? Or is it Sher e Banarasi? Another 15 seconds for you. Okay. 95 of you got onto the clue. Shikar means, of course, hunting, and it is the Shikar Ga. Let's see what the scoreboard looks like. Okay, all the top five have scored on that. Okay, so Shikarga actually is not a particular kind of a weave, but a group of designs that depict hunting scenes on fabric. They predate the British period. In fact, 16th, 17th century Mughal miniatures, actually you can see uh, Mughal nobles wearing a Shikarga out on hunting. And it is, it is a very interesting balance between the positive part of the design and the negative as spaces between the images, which create a very alluring feel to the whole thing. The Kanjipuram version of this is also available. Now people make it in Kanjipuram sins, and that goes by the name of Manasingaram, okay, or the glory of the forest. So that is Shikarga. Moving on from Banaras silks to Satoshi Tajiri and Game Boy. So what grew out of Satoshi Tajiri's boyhood hobby of catching bugs and a Game Boy link cable? I'm looking for a seven 
letter answer. Lot of clues in the visual. A lot of you are quick on the mark on this particular question. I think it's one of the more popular questions. Right. So, fish catch, modding, emojis. But the right answer is Pokemon. Okay. Or Pokemon to be very correct. Well done. So, Pokemon actually is short for Pocket Monsters, as you may know, which is the original Japanese game. So, Tajiri was actually an avid collector of insects, butterflies and bugs. In fact, he was known as Mr. Bug when he was young. And then he said he saw these two Game Boys connected by a cable. And he said, why can't we use that to actually catch little other creatures as well, virtual creatures. And that's how the entire Pokemon franchise started, along with his friend who drew the illustration list. Okay, whose friend's name I think was Ken Sugimori. Well, that's for you. That was Pokemon. Moving on to something which I feel epitomizes the good quiz. What is the true word name of this service by Sikhs during the pandemic that literally allowed us to breathe? Two words of six letters each. I think many of you may remember a couple of years ago during the terrible Delta variant about the acute shortage of oxygen and things like that. And especially in the north, in Delhi, a lot of people struggling and the Sikhs came up with this wonderful idea. Okay. And this was known as the oxygen langar. Okay, all of you are familiar with langar, which is of course the Persian word is of course arms house, but this is why when you go to a Gurdwara, inevitably you will visit the langar where uh, you have communal, not only just cooking the meal, preparing the meal and having the meal together irrespective of your caste or creed. This was a wonderful tradition started by Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And this seva, which is done not of food, but something Equally important, which is oxygen, was done in Delhi during the Delta variant and it's close by the name of Oxygen Langer. Perfect example for a good quiz. Next question coming up. The world's first inflatable mobile concert hall opened in Japan in 2013 in response to the tsunami. Who designed it? You have some helpful blanks there. So there was a Japanese architect by name Aracha Isozaki. He teamed up with someone else to design this orb-like structure, which was modeled on an artist's earlier work to create this very, very interesting inflatable auditorium.
right? Let's see what you've written. Someone wrote Arjun Kapoor. I'm afraid not. And not Anish Kapoor either. It is Anish Kapoor, which is the right answer. It is the Indian uh, sculptor and artist, uh, Anish Kapoor, who did it. In this particular project, Anish Kapoor had earlier done this inflatable device called the Leviathan, uh, displayed at the Grand Palais in Paris. And uh, this Japanese architect, Isazaki, got his idea from that. And the two collaborated to produce this inflatable one. There you see it uh, completely deflated more. The entire concert hall can be collapsed once the concert is over. This is at the Lucerne Festival held at Matsushima 2013. The whole project was called Arc Nova. And they said that it will hope that it will become a symbol of recovery immediately after the great earthquake disaster. So that was Anish Kapoor and his inflatable concert hall. Next question coming up on the Murugappa Good Quiz. In 2022, this singer actor launched her line of clothes for canines under what name? There's a clue there. Just replace two letters of her name. So the answer is in two words. In the first word, if you just replace two letters of her name, you'll get the answer. Amazing singer and actor and all round really good person. Good in capital letters, I would say. Okay, Selena Gomez. No, it's not Pamela Anderson either. You hope. It's Dolly Parton and therefore this answer would be Doggy Parton. Okay, so... Uh, Dolly Parton, and in fact, CNN uh, very humorously described this as Dolly Parton's latest business venture is literally going to the dogs. So Dolly Parton says this, Puppy Love in 1959 was my very first record. And six decades later, my love for pets is stronger than ever. This inspired me to start my own line of Doggy Parton apparel. And uh, part of the proceeds will support Willa B Farms, a rescue where animals in need will find never-ending love. Don't we need all that? So that's, thank you, Dolly Parton, for starting Doggy Parton as well. And moving on from dogs, what do we, if dogs are there, can something else be behind? Cats. What is this comfy cat doing? Is it loafing, readying to pounce, cozying, or shoeboxing? If you're finished answering, you can stare at the cat and see who blinks first. You can see it's totally relaxed. Its claws are all in. It's turned its paws inward. Paws are tucked in very well. What do you think it's doing? 72 of you have said loafing, but a lot of you said shoeboxing, which I made up totally. My apologies to you. So what is loafing? So it's actually called loafing, not because it's roaming around here and there. It's actually seated very comfortably, shape of a bread loaf. And that's why it's called loafing. And loafs, cat loaves are clearly not a defensive position from which they can spring into action. So they're not going to pounce. And it just shows they're very, very comfortable and showing you their trust. But one thing, remember that cats can also sometimes adopt this position if they are in pain. And when they are in pain, you know that their paws won't be tucked in like that. Okay. So it's good to see whether the paws are totally tucked in. If they're totally tucked in, this cat is comfortable 
and it's loafing and it trusts you. Next question. This is a puzzle. So you have to drag and arrange these court colors of tennis grand slam venues in chronological order of play, starting from January to December. These are the colors of the courts. So move them. I've labeled them for you. Uh, green and blue is there. Uh, blue and white is there. Brick red and green. The image is there for your reference. Don't be misled by the color of these boxes which you have to drag around. Okay. Look at the colors on the image and look at the text on the image and match it with the text on the boxes. I want these in chronological order of play. Definitely slowed down the answering here as people try to move these boxes around on their mobile phones. Come on, finalists, you have about 15 seconds left. Okay, and we are done. Let's take a look at what's happening to the score. So this is the order, blue and white, brick red, green, and green and blue. 94 of you got that right. Oh, and there's a small change here in the lead. Bhavya Bansal overtaking Ayush Utsav. And here is the key. So blue and white is the Australian Open, which is mid-January. And then we have the French Open, the brick red colors of the clay courts, which is in late May to early June, followed by Wimbledon in June and July. Of course, the color is green for grass. And finally, the US Open in August and September, where the colors are blue and green on the courts. So hope a lot of you enjoyed that part of it. Moving on to the next question. In January 2023, huge crowds gathered to see whose Dakota being moved from Kolkata to be displayed at BPIA. You can see the gentleman, the tall, towering gentleman in white in the middle. Who is that? Time ticking away, and a lot of you have finished your guesses, I think. Okay, this was a relatively easy one. 99 of you said Biju Patnayak. Very well done. It is right. BPIA is Biju Patnayak International Airport. So, this is a story in 1947 when the Indonesian Prime Minister and the Vice President were held in the house arrest by the Dutch forces and the British forces and Nehru requested Biju Patnayak who at that time was a Congress MLA and who was a well-known pilot in his own stead to go and rescue the Indonesians and so Biju Patnayak went and did that in his trusty Dakota and he brought the two back to Delhi for which Biju Patnayak is always held in the highest esteem in Indonesia and he was conferred the Bintang Jasa Uttama award by the Indonesian government. So in, in fact, the, the Dutch threatened to shoot him down if he crossed into Indonesian space. And Biju Patnaik is said to replied, if you shoot me down, India will shoot all the Dutch planes flying over India and nothing untoward happened. And he rescued the Indonesian prime minister and vice president. So that's a tribute to the great Biju Patnaik. 
and he was the one who started Kalinga Airlines. Next question, which company helps an international fund named after this person whom you see in the picture because of a certain shared association? Just looking for a one word, seven letter answer. You can see some apes there. I won't tell you which kind of ape it is. All right, so a lot of you wrote Corning and some of you have written Gorilla. Some of you identified the lady who is Diane Fossey. Only 11 of you got this, so I think this will probably be one of the lowest uh, answered questions, the least ones maybe. So this is Corning who make the glass on your mobile phone, which is called Gorilla Glass. And this is um, in tribute to Diane Fossey. Diane Fossey did a lot of work with uh, gorillas in Africa. And she is one of the group of people called trimates, uh, punning on the word primates, uh, of Louis Leakey. Louis Leakey is a famous anthropologist. They're also known as Leakey's Angels. The three women were Jane Goodall, Diane Fossey, and Birute Galdicus. And she, they, these three ladies were chosen by Leakey to study primates in their natural environments. So each of them, Jane Goodall studied chimpanzees, Diane Fossey studied gorillas, and Birute Galdica studied the orangutans. Diane Fossey, unfortunately, was uh, uh, killed in Africa by people whom we don't know as yet. The last entry in her diary, I'll read it out to you. When you realize the value of all life, you dwell less on what is past and concentrate more on the preservation of the future. Thank you, Diane Fossey, and we are great to have her in our good quiz part of the curated set. Moving on to the next question. ID Manipur's Miracle Man, who crowdfunded a 100-kilometer road in 2012 to connect Tausam village to the rest of the world. One small step, this IAS officer's parents named him after the man who first stepped on the moon. There are four options for you. Is it S. Funsok, V. Mittal, A. Pame, or K. Gopinathan? 17 of you said A. Pame. Well done. That is the right answer. So this is a uh, Manipur uh, IAS officer, Armstrong Pame, named after Neil Armstrong. So literally where there is a will, there is literally a way. So he wanted to build this, uh, this village of his had no access to roads. People had to walk extensive distances. And so he decided to crowdfund because the government didn't have any money to pay for a paved road. He crowdfunded on Facebook and other media and he collected the money and built this road all by himself. Okay. Apparently his, he wants to increase the road by another 10 kilometers, but his mother has told him, uh, yeah, this is what he says. There are many things to be done. One of them is to extend the road by another 10 kilometers. But my mother says, stop building roads and start building your house first. Okay. Thank you, Armstrong Pome, for taking the lead and the initiative. It just shows you what wonderful IAS officers we have in our country and what all can be done if you have the will and there is the way to do it. Next question. Right, so this, uh, we, yeah. the answer to our last of our questions, uh, audience questions was Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay, uh, who was briefly married to Harindranath Chattopadhyay. She's 
Several cultural institutions in India exist because of her vision, including the National School of Drama, the Sangeet Natak Academy, the Central Cottage Industries Emporium, and the Crafts Council of India. So this is Kamla Devi uh, Chattopadhyay, a remarkable woman. She was the first woman also to run for a legislative seat in India in the Madras provincial elections. Okay, so and that was a Google Doodle on her 115th birthday on April. 2018. That brings us to the end of the Good Quiz 2023. I hope you all had a good time taking part in this quiz in the prelim and in the final. And to the wonderful audience there on YouTube, thank you for tuning in and watching us. And we hope you enjoyed the quiz as well. And you have information to read and explore more on the good things in life, which is what we at Murugappa would like you to do. And that's a wrap and let's take a quick look hopefully at uh, the scores and do of course please share your feedback okay uh, do we have that feedback address afterwards can you let me know okay we'll share that screen so in first place is Bhavya Bansal who overtook the last literally three four questions Ayush Utsa, well done, you come second, and Shoyan Maithi in third place. We will announce, of course, after going through all the answers, we will announce the remaining uh, seven of the top ten uh, a little later in a couple of days. Meanwhile, thank you, and do share your feedback uh, to the Murugappa group uh, email. I will say it out, I'll just read it out to you in a minute. Can you share that on the Zoom? Yeah. So we are sharing this on the Zoom. Here you go. Share your feedback and suggestions and send us, drop us a line at the good quiz at corp.murugappa.com. With that, it's thank you from the Murugappa group. And thank you from me, Dr. Naveen Jayakuma. Have a great day and see you again next year for the Good Quiz 2024. Good day.